support for Colleton County Fire and Rescue. And what is your position? I'm the, I'm the fire chief. The fire chief of Collin County Fire and Rescue? That is correct. And how long have you worked at Collin County Fire and Rescue? Uh, 29 years. And about how many scenes do you think you have responded to over the years? Uh, I have no idea. Many <laughs> thousand. <laughs> As, um, what are some of the um, training that you need to do um, to be a paramedic or uh, respond with fire and rescue? Well, that has changed greatly over the years, but presently uh, to be a paramedic, you have to have been an EMT for, it, we recommend two years, which that's about a 500 hour course. And then you take a uh, paramedic course, which is about 1500 hours. Uh, in Colleton County, we require people to be cross-trained, so they have a 500-hour firefighter course as well. And are you yourself a paramedic? I am. And how long have you been a paramedic? Since 1981. What are the would be the normal um, procedures when responding to um, a gunshot, to treat gunshot wounds or to a shooting? Well, when you initially respond, the uh, law enforcement that's responsible for that jurisdiction typically clears the scene to make sure that it's safe for the other responders. Uh, when we arrive, we want to evaluate the patients to make sure that you know, if they've got some injuries that we can treat, we treat them, and uh, we transport them to the closest trauma center. So if someone has been shot, what would you normally um, do to initially treat that person? Well, we would control their bleeding, protect their airway, uh, get them transported as quickly as possible. It may involve starting IVs. In Colton County, we carry blood, so we could administer blood to the patient if they required it. Okay. Did you respond to um, Moselle Road on June 7th of 2021? I did. And um, tell us about what you did when you got there. Uh, I was on my way home from work, and uh, I heard the Sheriff's Department on their radio dispatch units to the uh, address in question and they advised that there was two people shot shortly thereafter they dispatched fire rescue units and we have a standard protocol of what they send there were multiple patients so they dispatched two ambulances and put a helicopter on standby and then a supervisor is also dispatched uh, we also send the closest fire station which in that case was the one from Islington uh, I responded from Walterboro and uh, I did arrive uh, ahead of everybody else uh, dispatch had told us not to go on to the scene, so I staged about the 3900 block. And a few minutes later, a deputy passed me, and I went in behind the deputy, which was um, uh, Mr. Green that y'all listened to earlier. And what did you see when you were driving onto the scene? Uh, it was really dark. The um, had a long dirt driveway, and uh, when we arrived, there was uh, some kennels off to the left, and like a big barn with a the three lane lean to on the uh, right hand side. show you what's been marked. It states exhibits 51, 49, 24, 
and 21. I just ask you to take a look at these pictures and tell me, um, are you familiar with, with those pictures? Uh, yes, ma'am. This does appear to be the accident scene. And these are um, true and accurate depictions of the um, crime scene that night? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, this time I would move states 51, 49, 24, and 21 into evidence with states exhibits 24 and 51 um, being sealed with the um, agreed upon place holders. No objection. You're admitted without objection. Um, how you observed the victims when you got to the scene? Uh, Deputy Green went through the scene first. Uh, he actually drove a little ways in between the uh, kennels and the lean-to. Uh, it was very dark, uh, so he needed his headlights to see what was going on there. There was uh, animals in the kennels. Uh, I don't know how many, but uh, there was also some chickens fluttering around on the uh, equipment on the right-hand side. Uh, the body of a younger uh, male subject was face down by the kennels. Uh, he had some very severe injuries to the head. And uh, there was a female subject at the end of the lean-to. Uh, she was also face down with severe injuries to her head. And there was a gentleman standing off uh, a little distance away from it. And uh, he was on a cell phone and seemed very upset. Did you recognize that gentleman? Uh, yes, ma'am. Who was that? Uh, Alex Murdoch. And how did you recognize him? Uh, I have met him in the past uh, on a professional basis because we have uh, had to do depositions and such with his law firm. Case Exhibit 21. Can you um, describe what the jury is looking at in this picture? On the left-hand side of the... Uh, Photograph is uh, the covered body of uh, Paul Murdoch, and the uh, down towards the end of the lean-to is you can see the uh, covered body of uh, Miss Maggie Murdoch. And those bodies appear to be covered with pink sheets. Yes, ma'am. Now, were those sheets there when you got there? No, ma'am. We got those off the ambulance and covered up the bodies. And why did you do that? Well, we typically do it to, uh, you know to shield the uh, bodies from the view of the public. There were a lot of people showing up there. The family was on the scene, and you know, people just really don't need to see that. State's Exhibit 24. Please describe what the jury's viewing. That is the uh, body of uh, Paul, and he is laying face down at the entrance to, uh, there's like a little utility room at the uh, kennels. Um, he is laying down with, you can see there's substantial damage to his head with a lot of blood around his head and what appeared to be his brain down there around his ankles. And this is how um, you found Paul? That is correct. Okay. And you said that appears to be his brain down there by his foot? Yes, ma'am. And um, at this point, would, did you check um, his pulse? I did not check his pulse. Uh, he and his mother had both had injuries that we consider incompatible with life. Uh, there was a lot of coagulation there where the blood had congealed, and they were not currently ble bleeding, which would indicate they did not have a heartbeat. And obviously, with his type of injuries, he, you know, it's not a, you know, any way you could sustain his life. Uh, that is uh, Miss Maggie, and uh, she also had severe injuries to her head. You can also see the congealed blood around the uh, bottom where her face is, and she had a, a hole in her head to where you could actually see inside of her head cavity. Was it necessary to um, check Mrs. Murdoch's pulse or perform any life-saving treatment? No, ma'am. And she, she also had injuries that were not sustainable. In State Exhibit 49, that's just where? That's the lean-to, and uh, 
that's Miss Maggie's body in front of the little uh, side by side. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have no further questions for this witness at this time.